Six months ago, I didn't know what is the real engine. It was shorts from my game, which I created on Unreal Engine 5 from scratch, and without knowledge of the software. Six months ago, I studied 3D graphics, a little modeling, a little motion design, and more and more often I began to meet information that Unreal Engine is the future of 3D graphics. Deciding that I was already lagging behind progress, I decided to start working with the Unreal Engine 5. I didn't know any knowledge about how graphics engines works and how game development works. In my opinion, the most interesting and effective way to learn the software would be to create a game and therefore I decided to create a third-person shooter on Unreal Engine 5 from scratch. Like fan-made remake of one old platformer that I liked as a child, Contra Force. To make my training in working with the program more competent, I adhered to the pipeline that large studios use when developing games. So the first step is the blockout. Blockout means assembling a game level for primitive objects and simple models. There is no question of any material settings, effects, animation and other things. In short, you need to designate how the main game objects will be located in the future. At the same time, it is important to take into account the future mechanics of the game to compose the scene so that it complies with the rules of composition and is interesting for the player. Since I was thinking of a remake of a 2D platformer, I had to solve the problem of how to make the level playable according to the next-gen gameplay and at the same time keep the familiar elements of key. the original game. In order to competently build a level, I turned to the experience of leading game development studios and created a reference map for my level. I found similar locations in games newer than 2012. Since in earlier games, due to hardware performance limitations, the levels were built more simply and no longer correspond to the next game. At this stage, I have already compiled a list of mechanics that will be applied at this level. I also diversified the flat level with ups and downs. At the same time, I always kept the level from the original game in mind and repeated the main locations, the pier, the factory, the abandoned park. I redid the level several times and eventually brought it to the state in which I will work. Mechanics. In short a set of interactions with the game and possible options for the implementation of the gameplay. In other words, everything that happens during the game due to the actions of the player or by default, whether it's walking, shooting, interacting with objects, all these are mechanics that are created using programming. In my case visual blueprint programming. Since I am creating a game in the third person shooter genre, this implies a set of typical mechanics for this genre, such as shooting, reloading, ammo replenishment system, aiming. First I created the mechanics of simple player movement, turns, acceleration when running. Added weapons, animation of shooting, reloading, aiming. Made it so that the player can hide and get weapons. Added realistic recoil and bullet spread. In order to make the gameplay rich, I added more mechanics for opening doors with buttons, and opening doors by pressing. I wrote a system for overcoming obstacles, when a player can catch on a ledge of an object and pull himself up. And of course it would not be so interesting to play if the player could not lose he created the Mechanics of the death of a character from enemy shots. I also wanted to add mechanics to the game that would repeat the mechanics of the original game, the fan remake of which I am doing on Unreal Engine 5, for the recognition of the original. I took the mechanics of falling barrels, sliding down and inclined, breaking boxes. My pride is a system of traps. These are moving conveyors, a press, crushers and pits. Social interaction is also a mechanic. I added one dialogue with the character, after which the door opens, allowing you to go further in the level. After creating the main mechanics, an understanding comes of what else needs to be added or redone. Creating and fixing all of the mechanics at this stage, we get a general idea of the game will look like. You can immediately identify the shortcomings of the landscape and correct it for mechanics. We have a working prototype of the game. Layout. After the prototype is ready, it's time to make the game beautiful. That is, replace all simple items with high quality models and customize the look. I wanted to make my game with realism, but I used only two of my hands and only free assets, so the graphics came out not the newest. In addition, I work on an old 105OT, which also imposes restrictions on working with graphics. In any case, I tried to adhere to the rules that the leading development studios used. I replaced the primitives with models for the largest objects in the scene these are large buildings. Since I'm doing a remake of an old game, the scene of which is some kind of port, I also stick to a similar style. I used some of the buildings entirely as ready-made models. But the main ones in which the action takes place had to be assembled manually from the elements. At this stage, your level may completely change from the prototype and even render unusable your mechanics. When you create a prototype, you roughly outline buildings and objects. But when you have ready-made models, you will realize that they do not match the prototype. Besides, I used the models that I found on the internet, so these changes were more noticeable for me. Next, you need to move from larger to smaller models in size, so you will do your job more efficiently. When you are done with perhaps the smallest objects, you can move on to the details and decals. Scatter garbage here and there, place traces of human activity, work tools, and so on. 
This gives the game realism, as well as relevance to modern games. If in games 20 years ago you would not find such a tale due to weak computing power, now the design of game levels is approached differently. Decals are a kind of texture that can be applied on top of the model. There is nothing perfect in the real world, there is dust, dirt, scratches, inscriptions, cracks and so on, and given that my location is an old port, there should be plenty of this. There are also plants, you need to add them in appropriate places so that they add realism to the scene and give atmosphere. Once you've replaced all the cubes on the model and added details. The next step is to tweak the look of the game with lighting, ambience, and post-processing. Light and reference. A very important component in both blocking and look deving work is working with references. Firstly a bunch of games have already been created before you and they were created by large teams. Of cool developers, they had designers and concept artists and painters and all of this in large numbers. And they've been making the game for use. Therefore, for your project, which you do alone, you can safely focus on their work. As they say in order to do something better, you need to do at least the same. References can be searched for on the art station, or simply from the records of games. I chose games of a similar genre and in locations suitable for my game. Then I collected everything on the board. This is the board I referred to when building the blocking and the most important placement of the models and also the lighting in my level. You can appreciate the difference. Looking at the work of professionals, you can see the principles of their work. Even the garbage on the street has its own meaning and completes the picture, makes the game deeper and more realistic. To be honest, I'm not happy with my lighting result, as I had to heavily optimize it for playability. Effects. When a beautiful scene is ready, you need to add effects, because sound and visual effects make the game complete. Nobody plays games without sound, and if the sound is bad and unrealistic, it ruins the game. When firing a weapon, you expect to see a flash and a bullet hitting an object. First of all, I added sounds for the characters walking. At the same time, in the real world, a person cannot make the same walking sounds on different surfaces. My level has concrete, metal, wood, stairs, rooms, and so on. For each type of these surfaces there must be a corresponding sound. You need to give sounds to the actions of the character and his interaction with objects. Everything must obey the logic of the real world in which we live. It is also very important to give sound to the environment. Without it, the game will feel plastic, like we're in a vacuum. Listen to your surroundings. You will always hear some background noise. The noise of the street, animals, conversations, the sounds of working equipment, and so on. I selected sounds for my level in accordance with the logic of the environment. I have a court, which means there are industrial buildings nearby, the sound of water, and wild birds. The main visual effects in my game are shots. Using the built-in Unreal Engine 5 tool, I created the flash effect from the shot, after the smoke was lined, as well as the effects of hitting objects, which consists of falling dust and splinters. In general there is nothing more to add here. Artificial intelligence. The game would not be interesting if there were no opponents in it, especially since I have a shooter. I decided to make simple enemies and not bother with a complex combat system. Opponents are created using the behavior tree system built into the Unreal Engine. In other words, it is an AI behavior tree. It is responsible for what and how AI does. In quiet mode, enemies perform the patrol function. Their logic roughly looks like this looked like. Stop. Went the other way. If he found me, he would turn on the function of attacking me and notifying other A's that I need to be attacked. I placed them in different locations and made sure that they did not attack me immediately on the entire map, but only when I arrived at the place where they were or only when they noticed me. There is also a boss in my level. Its logic is the same as that of all other enemies, but I added speed, more damage and a lot of help to it through behavior tree. You can also make a system of dialogues. The logic is something like this. The AI speaks, then depending on my answer, the corresponding branch is selected in the tree. Such dialogues make the game deeper and more realistic. Character. If for AI I used annual models from PAX. For GG I decided to make a custom character from ready-made models. I wanted GG to look like a character from the original game, so I picked up similar things from a sketch fiber and put them together in Cinema 4D to create the skeleton. I used Mixamo and twisted it in the same Cinema 4D. Then I created a rig in Unreal Engine 5 to copy all the animations from the standard mannequin to mine. It turned out a little not a typical hero, who even dresses like this. Some animations had to be corrected manually, because when moving from a mannequin to a model, the animations distorted the model. But in the end it turned out to be playable. Cinematics. In order for the game to look complete and explain what is happening here, I made several cutscenes, as with the layout, for non-professionals making the game alone, it is important to use references. I reviewed a bunch of game walkthroughs in order to find plots suitable for my goals. And I found something in the game's Resident Evil, Batman and Forbidden Horizon, based on the cuts. I created cutscenes in the sequencer. This is an Unreal Engine tool that allows you to expose cameras, animate them, add effects, and embed animations in existing models, to make it more convincing. I also added an animation of the character's face using the face app application. Of course, he doesn't say anything, but he already looks better than without emotions. Tests. 
as in professional game development in studios, game tests are important in your personal projects. This is a game already packaged, not inside Unreal Engine, but as an application. Tests should be carried out both at the prototype stage and on more finished versions. They will help to identify errors and shortcomings in the game. The first time you can conduct tests yourself, when the game is still far from complete, but then you need to involve other people in the work. Because they may notice things that you no longer notice. During the development of my game, about 10 people played it. They recorded the passage, and I could see with a fresh eye what I needed to fix or refine. Even when it already seems that everything is ready, the test reveals an error that needs to be fixed. Tests also show how well the level is designed. After all, if a player who is unfamiliar with the game does not understand where to go, then this is bad level design, in finish form. It takes about 20 minutes of continuous gameplay to complete my game, which is not so little. The players noted that they liked the variety of the level, and the most common criticism was that it was not similar to the game developed on Unreal Engine 5. Well, yes. This is my failure for some reason, the game really looks outdated. We will assume that this is a feature, because this is a remake of the old platformer after all. In 6 months, I mastered the skills of working in Unreal Engine from scratch and created my first game on the game development pipeline. It was a great experience. The courses from Isave's workshop helped me with this. I'll post the link to the course in the description of the video. Also soon I will post a complete walkthrough of my game, so subscribe so you don't miss out. Also go to my social networks and subscribe, write comments, please like. And thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions I will be happy to answer them.